Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're safe, I hope you're healthy, I hope you've got a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here. In today's video, we are going to start another mini series on market structure to little by little help you all have a great understanding of the most important element of trading being market structure. So if you get value from this video, make sure to press the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, press the subscribe button. Welcome to the family and welcome to the community. But before we jump into it, before we even speak about market structure and go through some of the basics of it in this video, first things first. Structure is perhaps the most important aspect of trading and analyzing the charts. A good understanding of market structure will elevate your trading game beyond your belief. Believe me when I say, even if you think you know market structure, even if you think you know exactly what it is and how to trade it and how to identify your trends and trends within the trends and break of structure and all of this, believe me when I say you are still going to get value from this series. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into it and let's first speak about some of the most basic points when it comes to market structure. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you already know about a bullish trend and a bearish trend. You already know about low, high, higher, low, higher, high, or high, low, lower, high, lower, low. But very quickly, I'm still gonna go through it just in case there are people that are struggling to understand what we mean when we speak about a bullish or a bearish trend. The idea behind trading is you always wanna be on the same side as the trend. So if the market is generally going up, you wanna look for buys. If the market is generally going down, you wanna look for sells. But the question is, how do we identify Identify if the market is generally going up or generally coming down. The best way I can describe this is think about it from the perspective of stairs. So if you have staircases that are going up, it's going to look something like this. And if you have staircases that are coming down, it's going to look something like this. And this is exactly what the market structure or the trends within the market actually look like. If the trend is going up, hence it's a bullish trend, then it's going to be similar to the steps going up. It's constantly going to create new highs or higher highs and new lows that are higher than the previous lows or what we call higher lows. And if the market is in a bearish condition, then it's the other way, it's the steps coming back down. So it's continuously creating new lows and new highs that are lower than the previous high, hence why we call it lower high and lower high and lower high and so on and so forth. And you've heard us speak about break of structure a lot as well. So in this specific case, let's say this level over here, once the market broke below this structure level, that's what we consider a break of structure because in a way we would expect in a bullish trend for the market to continuously create higher lows and higher highs. So if the market in a way doesn't create the higher low and go to create another higher high and instead creates a new low, lower than the previous major higher low, then now that's a break of structure to the downside. But as we all know, this basic understanding of market structure is really not enough for us to be able to become profitable traders. So let's go into a little bit more detail about the fractals or about seeing lower time frame structure alongside of the higher time frame structure. For example, if you are seeing this picture, maybe on the four hour time frame, on the hourly time frame or 15 minute time frame, you are gonna be able to see smaller trends within this trend. So you'll be able to see trends going up within one major move of the larger trend. So instead of it just being one major move on the lower time frames, you're able to observe smaller steps. And this is what we have drawn over here, where you can clearly see that the blue line is the higher time frame trend. In this case, I haven't drawn a proper trend. I've just shown kind of a three wave bullish trend and a three wave bearish trend just to be able to show you in theory what we mean when we speak about fractals. So if on the higher time frames you've got this bullish trend, on the lower time frames you're able to see these trends within the trend of the higher time frame. And you might ask, what do I mean by higher time frame versus lower time frame? That's relative. It depends what higher time frame you're looking at and what lower time frame is going to be relative to that. So it doesn't have to be from daily to four hour or from one hour to 15 minutes or from monthly to, let's say, the four hour time frame. It's a relative higher time frame and a relative lower time frame. And what I mean by that is on whatever time frame you're able to identify the bigger trend on a relative lower time frame, a time frame that's at least half the time frame that you were initially looking at, you will be able to see the 
these smaller trends in the middle. And I think this is where a lot of traders get confused because on the daily or four hour time frame that identify a bullish trend and when they go to the lower time frames they'll see a bearish trend because they'll be seeing the smaller time frame market structure. And this really throws them off whether they should be looking at buy positions or sell positions. So consider this scenario. Let's say you've analyzed your chart, you can clearly identify a bullish trend and maybe even based on other factors that you have, you expect the market to have another impulse to the upside. So the very final thing you'll end up observing is this low, high, higher low and higher high. And based on this, on the higher time frames, you're more on the bullish side and you expect for the market to give you a little retracement, being this dotted line back down, for the next impulse to get ready and for you to be able to trade this next impulse to the upside. But then you'll go to the lower time frames and now you're able to see the lower time frame trend as well. So you'll end up observing this bullish trend within the larger time frame trend on the lower time frames. So on the higher time frames, you can see this as one major swing to the upside, which I'll speak about a little bit later as well. And on the lower time frames, you're able to see this little step by step move. So you'll end up trusting that structure as well. You'll end up wanting to trade based on the lower time frame market structure. And where traders get really confused is when on the lower time frames they would be able to see something like a break of structure, where on the lower time frames you might see that the market has now broken below the lower time frame bullish trend. And this is where things go wrong because as soon as traders observe this, instantly they would consider this a break of structure to the downside and therefore they would expect this to continue going lower. And this is probably one of the scenarios that you have traded before as well, where you want to buy it, but you'll eventually see a lower time frame break of structure and you'll end up trusting it once it broke structure to the downside, maybe you were trying to go ahead and sell it over there or maybe waiting for another pullback to look to sell it. And before you know it, the market has another rally to the upside. And now you're confused thinking, hang on a second, this just broke structure. How comes it just had another rally to the upside? What I'm about to say right now is the entire point of this video. Just because lower time frame breaks structure does not mean higher time frames will follow. Exactly what I've written over here. And take this into consideration as well. For the market to break structure on the higher time frames, so let's say for the market to break structure on the four hour time frame, first we need to see a break of structure on the lower time frames. So before it breaks structure on the four hour time frame, it needs to break structure on the one hour. It needs to break structure on the 15 minute. It needs to break structure on the one minute time frame. But just because it gives you a lower time frame break of structure, this does not mean that your higher time frame trend will also respect that. And what I mean by that is just because over here it's broken below the lower time frame trend, by no means this is an indication that on the higher time frame we are going to reverse as well. For us to be more confident about higher time frame reversals and more swing trade positions, then we need to see higher time frame breaks of structure as well, which would be somewhere around here in this case. So although in this example it's broken below this minor structure point, it's not considered a major break of structure if you're looking to trade the next major swing to the upside. This whole thing over here can be considered a pullback and you always have to pay very close attention to where the major swings in the market have taken place. Where have we had a major swing, a major move in a given direction? And probably the best way that I can help you out with it is what I've written down here. When marking up structure points, it's important to know where in the market have we had a major swing. The low and the high point of that swing will be your trend points and the smaller moves in the middle are your lower time frame structure points. Where we have had the major swing, the low and the high of the swing points being the major structure points and the smaller moves in the middle being your lower time frame structure points. Simple as that. Now, enough theory, let's jump on the charts and let's analyze GBP USD and see exactly what's been happening with pound dollar in terms of market structure. So truth be told, I can go into so much information about this GBP USD example and start it off from the monthly and the weekly time frame and break it down, talk about where we've manipulated and why we were expecting a bullish move and all of these things. But instead of doing that, I just want to focus on what this video is about, which is the major structure point and what has been taking place. So I'm mostly going to be focusing on the four hour time frame and below in terms of what I'm going to be speaking about right now. And I'll start it off with an example from some time ago around April last year, because I believe this is one of the most perfect examples to be able to show you exactly what I was speaking about earlier. So let's say you are on the four hour time frame and you're able to now identify this low, high, higher low, 
higher high. So generally speaking, you can see the, the start at least of a bullish trend on the four hour time frame. Now that we can see the higher time frame trend, we also now want to pay attention to the lower time frame trend as well. So I'll put this in replay mode and then we can have a look at how in a way the market has been reacting and maybe even quote unquote breaking structure, yet it still continued to have the next bullish rally to the upside. So check this out. These four levels are your four hour structure points. However, when I go ahead and zoom into the hourly time frame, I can go ahead and identify the smaller structure within this major trend. And the example that I'll give you is here. This is now our major swing to the upside and the smaller structure points is low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low. I'm not going to take into consideration all of these small waves. These are lower time frame structure. Generally, that would be the higher low higher high, higher low, and probably your final higher high. So now this is the smaller trend that's forming within the larger time frame bullish structure. And this is where a lot of people get confused because traders would go ahead and identify this as their last major swing point, either over there or they'll go ahead and identify this level, for example, as their last major swing point. And let's say this is what they're observing in the market now. So they don't even see what's happened after that. They see the four hour impulse, they see the smaller time frame waves in the middle, and they go ahead and identify these as some of their major structure points. And once slash if the market breaks below these levels, they would anticipate and they would look for sell positions to the downside. Now, I'm not saying this is not the right thing to do, but it depends what type of a trader you want to personally be. And the reason I'm saying this is, of course, if you want to be more on the intraday perspective or scalping perspective, by all means, you'd indeed be able to take these sell positions to the downside based on the smaller time frame break of structure. But what I'm trying to tell you is just because it has broken structure over here, in no way this is an indication that this market is now going to come down here and break below the major four hour structure point. This can very well be a retracement and eventually go back up. And this is exactly what took place in this scenario as well. Let's take it off replay mode and let's come back to where we were looking at. This is exactly what we can observe over here as well, where in a way on the lower time frames you can see some type of a break of structure to the downside. However, the market still ended up reversing and over the longer period of time ended up going higher. Although it ended up breaking structure on the lower time frames, the move to the downside was not a long move, was not a major move breaking higher time frame structure points as well. And even though it created a perfect looking bearish trend as it started to retrace, it still was not enough confirmation for us to now want to trade against this, for us to now want to in a way sell it to the downside. Again, scalping and intraday, that's a different story. I'm more of a swing trader personally. And when we go back up to the four hour time frame, you can now see exactly what we were speaking about earlier, where you have your low, high, higher, low, higher, high on the four hour time frame. This is now your next higher low. I'm going to just identify this as the major higher high up there. But you can see that within the same higher time frame trends, you have these lower time frame trends as well. And this is clockwork, by the way. You'd be able to see this over and over and over and over and over again. In fact, I'll go ahead and focus on this final impulsive move that we have had on the four hour or the daily time frame. So the final major impulse has been from this low to this high. Now I've highlighted this specific area, so I'm going to be speaking about this area a little bit more as I believe this would have been a perfect scenario for a lot of people to look to sell it, yet instantly they would have hit stop loss. Now you might identify the hourly structure points slightly different to how I'm going to draw them right now. That doesn't necessarily matter too much as of right now. I just want you to be able to see the general major structure points from the low to the high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low higher high. This is majorly the hourly swing point. So you can go ahead and put another higher low over here, um, another higher high and another higher low. But either way, that is the major move that has been taking place on the hourly time frame. Let's go ahead and put this in replay mode and let's bring it back to right here. If this is now my major hourly trend on the lower time frame, such as 15 minute, 10 minute, 5 minute, you will be able to observe all of these little moves that are taking place as your smaller time frame trends. I'm not going to spend too much time going through them right now, otherwise we'll just keep going to the lower time frames and identifying structure points. I want to speak about something that's a lot more important and about how to not be trapped in positions like this. 
this level over here probably would have been a very attractive level to identify as a major structure point, as a major swing or a major reversal point in the market. And the expectation would be if we break structure below there, you can expect sell positions. You can expect that the market is now going to reverse and come back down. But remember what we spoke about earlier. Just because we break structure on the lower time frames, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to follow on the higher time frames. So on the four hour time frame, you knew you were bullish. On the hourly time frame, you knew you were bullish as well. So if it hasn't broken below the major hourly or the four hour points, you should not be looking for sell positions. This sell position, however good it looks, is invalid. Yes, I see that it's created a bearish trend. High, low, lower, high, lower, low. Yes, I see that this came up and mitigated this final institutional candle. So the risk to rewards would have also been phenomenal. But again, it depends what type of a trader you want to be. As an intraday trader, by all means, this would have been a phenomenal scenario to want to be taking this to the downside and perhaps target these same lows or maybe this inefficiency over here. But as more of a swing trader or someone who wants to be in their position slightly longer, you have to pay attention to a little bit of a higher time frame structure points. So this would have been a no trade scenario until we started to challenge the major hourly or the four hour structure points to the downside. And then I would have looked to sell it. Simple as that. Even for those of you who are trading intraday, the same thing does apply just on different time frames. You still have to pay attention to the relative higher time frame based on whatever time frame you're initially looking at. So let's take this off replay mode so I can speak about a couple more examples here on GBPUSD as well. This swing is another perfect textbook example where you can clearly see that from this low to that high is our major hourly time frame swing. However, on the 15 minute time frame or 10 minute time frame or whatever it may be, you can see the low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. So you can see the trend within the trend. But just because it's broken below there, just because it's broken below there does not mean this is a trend reversal sign because it's still contained within the previous higher time frame major swing. It's still a retracement in a way of that massive impulse to the upside. And this is where you have to develop your patience properly for the market to in a way tell you what it's ready to do. Because sometimes it will break the lower time frame structure points and then reverse and other times it won't. And the example that I'll give is exactly the next swing that we have had over here. And the first swing, it broke the lower time frame structure points, then had the next impulse. However, over here, this is our impulse. This is the lower time frame low. We can put that as high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. In this specific example, it didn't actually break the lower time frame structure points. It respected the lower time frame structure points, so it created another higher low, and it went ahead to create another higher high. But more than anything else, what I want you to take away from this video is do not identify any random level as your structure point and expect the market to completely reverse in its trend just because it's broken a random structure point. So I hope that kind of makes sense in terms of applying the theory of what we just spoke about to the actual charts to be able to make a little bit more sense of it, to see what I mean when I talk about the smaller time frame trends or the fractal trends, and also what I mean when I speak about the lower time frame break of structure versus, for example, the higher time frame breaks of structure. But here's the thing, this is not all about structure. There's still so much more that goes into market structure, hence why I've decided to record a series rather than just one long video. So this first video was more of an introductory video for market structure for everyone to now be on the same page for us to know what market structure is what a bullish or a bearish trend is be able to identify the lower time frame structure points and what we're going to be speaking about in the next video is specifically how to utilize the lower time frame structure points for your entry confirmations so we're going to be speaking about how you can in a way know when this retracement is finished forming. And this is also another huge topic in my personal opinion when it comes to trading, because as long as you know you're in a specific trend, if you know where this pullback is going to stop and reverse, then you're a profitable trader. So in the next video, we are gonna be speaking about this. We're gonna be speaking about how to utilize the lower time frame trends to confirm your positions. And in the future videos, we'll speak about how different concepts like Wyckoff, or smart money concepts can be used alongside of this for better analysis. So stay tuned about the next videos coming out. There's still so much more that we need to go into, but I'm personally looking forward to recording those videos. And more than anything else, I'm looking forward to seeing each and every single one of your breakthroughs utilizing these concepts properly. 
So if you got value from the video, do make sure to press the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, press the subscribe button. Welcome to the family and welcome to the community. Also, don't forget to turn on the post notifications below. It'll help a lot. And finally, please understand that because market structure is perhaps the most crucial element of trading, it's also going to be one of the most confusing concepts to get your head around properly. So utilize the time in between the video releases to practice this properly in your own time. Backtest and forward test it and see how it applies to your specific style of analysis. Also, if you want pictures of these drawings, feel free to join my Telegram channel. The link will be in the description down below. I'll go ahead and send these pictures a little bit later as well. But with that being said, let's elevate and let's catch some pips.